In this video, I'm sharing step-by-step -step instructions for five loose watercolor flowers that you can master right now. Hey gang, welcome back. My name is Shada and today we are going to get your confidence up with a few simple watercolor florals. It's a really great feeling when there's a few things that you know you really can paint. And so I'm hoping today to help you master these loose watercolor botanicals. And as we paint, I don't want you to focus on the finished product. I don't want you to focus on the lilac or the eucalyptus. Rather, I want you thinking about your brush strokes, the way you move the brush across the page. A lot of these flowers come together with messy little dots or lines. So that's where our focus will be. Okay, so let's do a quick supply rundown. You can use any watercolor paper. I am working on a 7x10 cold pressed block from Arches. Um, it's 140 pounds, it's good quality paper. Paper is so important. Next, we're going to be using pointed round brushes. I have a number three and a number four. So a pointed round brush comes to a beautiful fine point, but it also has this large belly that holds lots of paint. So you can do large areas and delicate fine areas with the pointed round brush. These are my favorite brushes. I've got clean water, paper towel for blotting, and then I am using my Muno watercolor set. It's a 48 color set. Also check out my blog, I have all the supply links there and still photos of the artwork, which you might find helpful. Okay, we are going to start with eucalyptus. So here, think about the brushwork. I started with this really delicate stem. I used just the tip of the brush. And then for the leaves, we're going to add a little more pressure to our paintbrush and kind of run the belly of the brush across the page in order to make leaf shapes. So I'm running that brush across the page and then I use the tip of the brush to refine the leaves. So run it across the page and then when you want to change that shape up slightly, you're just using the tip of the paintbrush to do so. And I'll do another one here. So start with that delicate stem, can be straight, could be curving. I do tiny leaves at the very top and then the leaves get larger as we move down the stem. Run the belly of the brush across the page and then use the tip of the brush to refine and uh, do the little stems and branches and whatnot. Finally, as the subject dries, you might use a wet on dry technique and a bit of darker paint to layer and give a little more dimension. Next, we're going to paint a simple flower. Now I'm working in pink, you could use any color. And again, it's all about the brush strokes. We're going to paint this flower one petal at a time. And uh, again, you're going to just think about running that belly of the brush across the page. Add a little extra pressure. And then to make sure the petal isn't um, too nice of a shape, you might use the end of the brush to um, make it a little jagged or a little weird. You know, you don't want these petals to be too smooth. So run the belly of the brush across the page and then use the tip of the brush to help refine the shape and make it into the little petal that you want. You can do four petals or five. I tend to make the ones at the bottom a little bit shorter. That helps with the concave look of the flower. And then as we wait for those to dry, we will add some leaves. And again, you're just running the brush across the page. Add that little bit of extra pressure. Try to do each leaf in one or two or maybe three brush strokes. Um, and then of course you can go back with the tip of the brush to help change the shape or to add a little bit more color. Use a little wet into wet, but just you know, leave it alone. It's a leaf. If you say it's a leaf, <laughs> that's what I always say. Just, uh, you know, let that brush just sweep across the page and then walk away. You don't want to mess with your watercolors too much. Finally, now that the petals have dried, you can take a contrasting color like golden yellow or brown or even a darker pink and just add some messy lines and dots. That gives us the look of the stamen at the center of the flower. 
Our next flower is a lilac, and if you notice my palette, I have a bunch of different purples mixed up, a cool purple and a warm purple. And here's what we're gonna do. I've got lots of paint in my brush, in the belly of the brush, and I'm just running the brush across the page in quite, quite a quick motion in order to paint all these little ovals and dots. They're really messy. They're all kind of blending together. And I'm grabbing from both purples so that I have some variation in the color. You can see at the top of the lilac is is very cool and light. Now I'm using um, a bit of a warmer purple, but it's it's so messy. Like this is so hard to screw up. You're just painting all these dots, all these messy brush strokes and little ovals. And uh, I start kind of small at the top and then the flower is getting larger and wider as I move down. Then while it is still wet, I am taking a dark green and just with the very tip of my brush. So here again, you're using the same brush, but just the point of it. You're going to add these little delicate stems. Then you can use the belly of the brush, run it across the page, and you can make some larger leaf shapes to surround the beautiful purple blossom. Um, and that's what you see me doing here. And I like to work in sections because I want that green to mix with the purple. So I did the top of the lilac, now I'm using dark purple and making um, lots more messy little blossoms. I'm working my way down, I'm allowing the flower to get a little bit larger. And then I've also added water to the paint. So the purple is getting lighter. That just gives me a nice variation. And then uh, using that green on the very tip of my brush while the purple is still wet, I can add all the little stems and add some more leaves. So um, watercolors can dry quite quickly. So do work in sections if you're painting a larger flower. And then to finish it, you'll just grab a little bit of dark brown and add a stem and maybe one or two branches at the bottom. Final step is just like the eucalyptus, do a little wet on dry and take a really dark green and just add some messy swatches or brush strokes to some of the leaves. Okay, we're going to paint a rose together. I've got a lot of dark pink in my brush and using just the tip, I am painting a cluster of dots. Then again, using the tip of that brush, I'm going to paint these broken curving lines. It's like I'm trying to paint a circle, but I can't quite make it all the way around. And then I allow those broken curving lines to get a little larger. So I'm adding extra pressure to the brush and sweeping it across the page. And uh, I'm leaving a little bit of negative space always in between. And those uh, lines of white coming through kind of give the look of layers and layers of petals. So it's a really fun, simple way to paint a rose. And the idea there is that you just make it into a circle. So go out as far as you like to make that rose as big as you would want it to be. Um, you can also, this is kind of fun, I sometimes start with yellow to do the little dots and the um, small lines at the center, and then using a peach, I do the larger uh, brush strokes. So in that way, you get a really nice blend of color, and uh, that's what watercolor is so good for. Uh, and then as with the other flowers, grab a bit of green and we're going to just make these messy leaves. You can play around a little with wet into wet. Just do these really loose shapes, you know, don't overthink it. Okay, so that is four really simple flowers that I think you can master today. Stop thinking about the flower. Uh, don't think about the outcome. Don't think about the form. You're not painting a flower with watercolor. You're just painting one petal at a time, one leaf at a time. It's all about the way you move the brush across the page. You can do these really delicate, thin brush strokes, or you can do wider, larger brush strokes. You can make flowers that are just little dots and swooshes. And in fact, that's what we're going to do now for our last flower. We're going to paint this one two ways. So here I'm using a purple and I am just making these messy little petals and dots. Some are heart shapes, some are little V shapes. 
And then I'm going to join them all with um, a brown. You could use green, you could use any color, but working with the tip of my brush, I'm just painting these tiny little stems and branches and leaves. And even though the floral shapes are really nondescript, by the time you add the branches and leaves, it, it really comes together and your viewer will know what it is. Focus on your brushwork, and I think not only will your watercolor skills improve, but you'll find it so much more fun and enjoyable and the painting process that much more natural and organic. To finish this loose florals practice page, I'm going to paint that purple flower that we just did again, but I'm going to make it a little larger so you can see how you can switch it up so easily. This time I'm using a creamy beige color. It's just white paint mixed with a little hint of brown. And again, it's heart shapes, it's little, you know, messy brush strokes, and uh, it's, you could kind of just do whatever you want, make some of them smaller, some of them larger, and then as we add all the stems and leaves to join them, that's when it really comes together, and you can tell like, oh, that's flowers. <laughs> and uh, here I'm using brown again, doing these tiny little oval-shaped leaves, it's just sort of one hit of the brush against the page, so just add that bit of pressure and then I'm using these tiny little lines and dots to do the stamen at the center of the flower and I think that really brings them to life. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up by just adding a couple extra leaves and flowers wherever I think one might look nice. This is just a practice page, but after all, it's always nice to finish things off in an aesthetically pleasing way. So I might uh, look for those areas where I need an extra leaf or something. And of course, it's always fun to do a little wet on dry and add those extra details and shading. You have a lot of control and precision when working with wet on dry. Okay, I think that's about it. This was a lot of fun, and I think if you watch the video a couple times, paint along, head over to the blog um, for still photos so that you can kind of have a photo on the screen while you paint. And I think these are flowers that you can master and really get your confidence up there when it comes to watercolor florals. Thank you for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm doing two videos a week and you don't wanna miss one. And I will see you soon with a new tutorial.